Okay, hopefully you have read through the section on analysis of variants, um, because otherwise a lot of this terminology may not make sense to you. But again, we are doing a hypothesis test on three or more population means, and if the means are, we come back and say the means are equal, then the analysis, analysis of variance part is to see if there's maybe some variability due to the treatments uh, within the treatments. And so that's kind of what we want to do to be able to fill out a table um, to look at if it's within these treatments and to see if it's just due to a particular error. So again, be sure if there's any symbols or anything in here you're not understanding, you definitely want to go through the section first. All right, so you're given a table, says in a completely randomized design. So that right there tells you we're doing analysis of variance. Eight experimental units were used for each of the five levels. So you could think of, you know, eight by five. So you'd have a, your total sample size then would be 40, eight times five. So it says complete the following ANOVA table and then tells you how to round. So I kind of stare at this for a while and I'm like, man, I don't even know what to, where to start. Well, there's different places you could probably start. What I did is I saw the five levels and I know that's my treatments and the degrees of freedom is found by taking that value minus one. So that one was pretty easy to get four. Then I mentioned that there was eight, this is an eight by five so 40, and this formula for the error degrees of freedom is that total of 40, and then minus my levels, and I get 35. And then finally down here, that's just adding those, right? So that's just the total, the sum. And then I look, well, I could kind of do the same thing over here. If this is a total, now that I know that, all I have to do is take 480 minus 300, and I can see when you add those, you get 480. All right, where to next? Well, we have a bunch of formulas in this section, and one of the formulas actually shows how to calculate um, the mean square due to the treatments by taking the sum of the square of the treatments divided by the degrees of freedom. So easy enough, 300 divided by four, and I get 75. Then I can do the same thing for the mean squared error because I know that's the sum of the squared of the errors divided by the degrees of freedom of the error. And I get 5.14. Okay, now I'm ready to get my F statistic based off of this information. And once again, my F ratio is a formula where I just simply take the mean squared of the treatments and divide by the mean squared of the error. And I get 14.58, which you're probably already hopefully thinking, wow, that's you know a pretty big test statistic, probably gonna reject. But remember, we like to look, uh, look at the p-value. If the p is low, the null must go, remember that? Well, I don't know how to find the p-value. You could actually um, you look things up in tables and all that other kind of good stuff, but I like you to really get where you're using Excel to do everything for you. So you don't have to keep going to 14 different web pages because you can, I'm sure you can find a web page for the p-value once you have an F statistic, but let's just use Excel. So Excel's function is the F.DIST, put your test statistic. Okay, so there's my test statistic. My degrees of freedom, it'll say degrees of freedom one and degrees of freedom two, so that's these. And this, remember, reading the F table is the area to the right, so I don't want to add all the area to the left, because in fact, if you do, you're going to see you'll get one. So it returns this, and remember this is scientific notation that says, um, take the decimal and move it seven places to the left because of that negative sign. So basically, your answer is zero. So you ought to get comfortable with just filling this out first, and then you'll get, we'll get to the point where what do all these numbers actually even mean?